Do you see me? Do you see me? If I was not the IG for the Department of Labor, would you still see me? If you were reviewing my resume and my name was Jamal or Jesus instead of Larry, would you have overlooked me? Or as you continue to read my resume, you notice I am a graduate of an HBCU, Morgan State University. Would that change your mind? Maybe I would get lucky and be selected for an interview, but as I entered the room, I had a noticeable disability or walked with assistance or a cane. Are you still on board? Lastly, during the interview, if I said something to lead you to question my sexual orientation, would you still see me as a viable candidate? So many qualified applicants are well qualified, often get overlooked for one of the reasons I just outlined or because they don't look or sound like the hiring manager or hiring panel. At Labor OIG, we embrace DEIA and see diversity as an asset. Our goal is to hire the very best. I contend that some of the best candidates are overlooked, invisible to many businesses and government agencies. Some of you hear this and have no idea what I'm talking about. Others have lived this nightmare. I too have experienced it. A few weeks ago, me and one of my executives shared a personal story. She applied for an executive position at her last agency. Although she was well qualified, she did not get the position. And I know what you're probably thinking. Maybe she was not the best qualified, which is possible. However, she would receive feedback from her hiring manager. And the manager stated that she was highly competitive. However, he stated that she would have a difficult time getting an SES position there because she wasn't a good fit. What does that mean? For some of you, this may sound familiar, or maybe you have been told you were overqualified. I must admit, this is one of the ones that I have heard. Shortly thereafter, she would apply for a position in Labor OIG and be hired as a member of our executive staff. She told me what she loved about us is that we looked past her race, we looked past her gender, we didn't notice her accent, she stated to me, you saw me. I thought to myself, what a profound statement. We saw her. We saw this enormous talent as an asset to our team. My first position in the government was as an executive officer in EXO for the executive director who was an SES of the Army Installation Management Agency, the senior civilian in the agency. Through a competitive process that included two interviews, I was selected for this GS-14 developmental position. It was a position that had mostly been filled by white males. The executive director's vision was for the EXO to rise to the level of GS-15 or higher. He had looked over the entire organization and realized that it had lacked diversity at the senior levels of leadership, with very few people of color even in the pipeline. My selection sent a powerful message throughout the agency. When it came to diversity, he not only talked the talk, but he walked the walk. It made me wonder why more agency heads or CEOs do not do this. My hire was such a shock to the agency's culture that one of the questions that I was frequently asked, did he know you? Have you worked with him in the past? Surely he wouldn't hire a person of color that he didn't know beforehand. See, even our staffs are conditioned to expect that leaders will go with their instinct and select someone that looks like them. No, he saw me. Further, he saw me as someone with the potential to serve at the executive level. He took me under his wings. He groomed me. He ensured I received the best executive leadership training available, even training he was not privy to. He allowed me to sit in on strategic discussions to see how decisions were made. He introduced me to other senior leaders. He became and still is my mentor. When I left the position for a promotion, I was replaced by the first female to hold the position. And she too is now an SES. Eight years ago, I applied for the deputy IG position for the Department of Labor. I was one of two finalists 
to receive an interview. When I arrived for my interview, the first thing I noticed was the diversity of the hiring panel. I didn't gain an advantage, but it made me feel comfortable and that I had a fair shot. If you give me a fair shot, I can do the rest. For two hours, I answered questions, articulated my experience and qualifications. At the end of the process, I was elected as the deputy IG. I would later discover that the other candidate was an experienced SES. Not only was she a seasoned executive, but she was a personal friend of the Inspector General. Knowing all of this, and with an endorsement from the interview panel, the IG still selected me. IG Dahl embraced diversity. He saw our differences as an asset to the organization. What a powerful message to send the OIG staff. From the start, he treated me as an equal partner as well as his alter ego. He saw me not only as the deputy, but someone that could eventually replace him. This was his vision long before I saw it. Together, we will start this movement to expand diversity. When I first arrived in labor OIG, I was the first African-American on the executive staff and second person of color. Today, seven of our 12 execs are people of color. There was only one female on the executive staff, and now there is seven. Currently, my audit staff is led by three female SES. My management and policy staff is led by two. And at one point a few years ago, the AIG and deputy for our Office of Investigation were both female. I have hired openly gay leaders and offered jobs to those with disabilities. They were all hired because they were the best candidates. I find that there is an unlimited number of highly qualified candidates that are being overlooked. They are motivated, hungry, and looking for a chance to make a difference. Many fall under the umbrella of DEIA. I have white employees that have been overlooked and I work to provide them with opportunities as well. Great leaders serve their entire staff. As I prepare to close, I want to give you a quick snapshot of the DEIA landscape. People of color make up about 40% of the US population and about 38% of the full-time federal workforce. As of March, 2021, People of color represent 47% of all full-time entry-level employees, but only 33% of senior level positions. That number is reduced even further for career SES members of color, is 23%. As of June 2018, women held only 34% of the government's more than 7,100 senior executive positions, according to the Office of Personnel Management. In 2015, a survey by McKinsey found that companies that had the most gender diversity in their leadership positions experienced a 15% higher financial return. So why the big push for DEIA? Research has shown more diverse teams produce better results and attract higher quality talent. Research released in 2018 by the Partnership for Public Service and Booz Allen determined that more diverse teams make better business decisions up to 87% of the time. And they do it twice as fast and with half the meetings. If we want the best organizations, we can no longer ignore this great wealth of talent that is available. By hiring them, you are getting a professional who's highly motivated, hungry, determined, committed, and extremely loyal. To those still searching, I want you to know, I see you. For all others, this is just as I started this conversation, do you see me? Do you see me? Mm -hmm.